Let us pray. Father in heaven, we are so grateful. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for the health you have given unto us. Thank you because when there is a casting down to us, there is a lifting up. Thank you because your joy gives us strength, gives us strength. Thank you because we can put on our data, can put on our devices to listen to us, to me. Many people in the hospital, they don't have that privilege. Life is a privilege, not a right. Because when somebody is sleeping, practically that person is dead until that person wakes up. Thank you for our different services we attended today, both online and offline. Thank you for your grace over our lives. Lord, we continually pray for our nation, Nigeria. Lord God Almighty, our hope and our trust is on you. Because the Bible says in Psalm 121, I will look up unto the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help in this nation will only come from you. Do that which you know that is right for us. Because one thing I know about you is that you are not a wicked God. You are not a wicked God. You are not a tax master. When the children of Israel cried unto you, you heard and you sent them a deliverer. In the person of Moses, Lord, we pray, send us a deliverance. Do not allow people that don't know you to ask us where is our God. Do not allow the people to rejoice over us. Lord, we look unto you and we trust you. We trust in your mercy. We trust in your wisdom to do that which is right for us in the name of Jesus. As we go into tonight's discussion, we ask you, that you come mightily and speedily, rest and abide with us. Let everything we will hear our say be to the glory of your name in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. This is our episode 186. Lord, you have been there for me. Through thin and thick, you have been always there. And I can't but acknowledge that. Thank you for the power of continuity, power of consistency. Lord, thank you. Thank you for all the people that you have touched their lives in one way or the other using this program. Father, I pray that the ones that you, you that God healed, their healing will be permanent. The ones that are in the process of coming out of sickness and pain, you will perfect everything that concerns us. Thank you, blessed Redeemer, for in Jesus' powerful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so, so much. I thank you for joining. Those of you, other people have joined, thank you. And I think God's beauty. I'm from my Madike, Chisumongo, Ebiya Mubi. That's for Taye Uju. I thank you so very much for joining. My name is Ngol is a favor for much and by God's grace, I have a PhD in guidance and counseling with psychology from the University of Lagos. That was 12 years ago. It will be exactly 12 years on June 2nd this year. And I think that June 2nd should be a, a Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. So we'll do a promo that day. <laughs> Thank you so, so very much. I appreciate all of you for coming. Thank you for the feedback I got last week from the episode 185. Today is episode 186. And it's my pleasure to thank you, to welcome you, and to thank you very, very, very much for always being part of this program. You can send, you can send the ID to your friends in your groups to join us. Because today we have something important to discuss, something that has become worrisome in our nation. And um, what we want to discuss today, it will be an interactive section. But then I will, I will start it up. And the topic is youth, youth, our youth, teenagers. If you are in Nigeria, you will, you will understand that there was a trend Certain things happened to us from last week 
So today, that's if you are a normal human being, you will be, you will be, you, you will be scared, you will be unsettled, you will be, you'll be afraid. You will be afraid. But then life continues. But we need to look at certain things and put them in proper perspectives. The program you have tuned in is called Great Life with Dr. Afoma and Great Life airs every Sunday evening by 8 p.m. Nigerian time. It's a program of Healthy Race Ministry International and Healthy Race is the ministry God gave Dr. Afoma in the year 2017. The year 2018, the Lord gave her this program called Onkufu Challenge. Our Onkufu Challenge will be coming up this month. We, what do we do in Onkufu Challenge? We go without eating anything cooked in fire by fire through fire. If you can just do three days to as many as you can, you can, as, many, as long as your strength can carry you, it's okay. Now, I want you to, what I want us to look at today is about our, our youth youth and then i also want us to know that this program began on the 22nd day of september 2019 2019 it began before the covid the covid lockdown 2020 and this is our episode 186 so we have been doing it every sunday every sunday even if it's christmas even if it's new year we always hold it I thank you so very much for being part of it. And I, 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 I assure you that you won't waste your data here for nothing. So thank you so very much. Last week, we talked about our health, how we can bring down blood, high blood pressure using natural means and how a woman took her mother to her house and placed her on a beautiful challenge and the woman that couldn't walk a pole without sitting down, she told me she can walk from her house to the church and it's quite a distance. And all the pains, she could sleep well. She became happier because anytime you do something good, your body releases a hormone. There are the feel good hormones that your body releases. They call them happiness hormone, dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, and the other. So today, I want us to discuss something that is really, really, really scary because all these things border on our health. Because when something is not right with your child or your friend's child or your friend's children, you'll be concerned if you're a, a, a good person. So but before I take off, I want to ask, do a check if you can hear me clearly and you can see me, please can you indicate by typing a one on the chat. Okay, thank you so very much. Uh, Sister Nick is here. I want to, this is, this, I, I will do, this thing you see is, is rough and it's old. It's a pity that the person that presented this in one of our, our um, programs, didn't write the dates. Her name is Pastor Joy Ebora, but she didn't write the dates because if I do a presentation in any place, if I give them the, the hard copy, I usually put the dates. So she didn't put it. She prepared this, but I'll infuse my thoughts into it because in my guidance and counseling uh, journey, I have come across uh, children, you know, from bed, we have from bed, some call it zero to, to one or zero to toddler stage, but we call it from bed. So there is no time is zero. The moment a man's sperm fertilizes a woman's egg, life has started. So it's no more zero. But we, we only say from bed. Now, there are different stages in, a, in, a human, in, in any human being you have from that birth to toddler stage, from toddler stage to childhood stage, from childhood stage to ad puberty stage. Puberty, you can also call it adolescent or teenage age. 
13, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, then 20. Then you have adults, adults who. So we are going to talk about the, 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 the people that fell within, let's say, 12 and 18. Because this most of the things that happen, or let's take it a little bit to 21, most of the things that I will call out to us, they were done by the people in this age bracket. And it, it gave me, because I did uh, my thesis was on assessment and management of psychosocial problems of adolescents in correctional centers in Lagos State. Correctional centers, they used to be called remand homes, but they've changed it to correctional centers. So I studied the children in those facilities, both male and female. The male, the male facility is situated at Oregon, Lagos, Lagos State, and the female just behind Lut at Idiaraba. So if you go there, you see lots of children from broken homes, from good homes, from, from, even, from even very pastor's houses. Let me say it like that. People that they are, you will not say that it's, it's, it's a result of problem that they came there. Because I, I met a young girl, the girl has a mom. But the girl said to me, auntie, instead of me to go back to my mom, I prefer to stay here. Instead of me to go back to my mom, I will just run across a moving vehicle and they will knock me down and I will die. Then I asked her what happened. Why will you say that? She said that I didn't send my mother on any message. My mother went to meet a man and the man made her pregnant. And I'm the result of that pregnancy. And my mother just started hating me for, some, for nothing, as if I am her problem. I didn't ask her to give birth to me. Every time she would be cussing me, every time she would be, she would be pouring paper on my body. So at that point, I had to run away from home. I want to tell you, anytime you see a child roaming the streets, have pity on that child. Something may be pursuing that child out of that home. Then another one, these are the, the, the distinct ones I followed up. Another one, he has a father, but the father and the mother got separated. And the father went and they remarried and began, the wife began to maltreat this boy. So the boy one, once told the, the father they were living in Atonichan. I want to go and see the mom. And the mom. And he went there and saw how he felt sick. So he overstayed. When he came back, the father drove him away. When the father drove him away, he gave him up to somebody as an apprentice. You know, apprentice boy. So from Onicha, he was taken to Shagamu. So he was with the Oga, learning that trade. He told me they were dealing on um, plastics, plastic bottles, you know, all the plastic, both chairs and the rest. So one day the Oga sent him to Lagos to come and book for what they will bring to them. And incidentally then, Oshodi used to be very notorious. There, there, there was a, a kind of battle of the cultists at Oshodi. So all the uh, vehicles got scattered. He didn't know where to pick a vehicle back to Shagamu. So he was roaming the that area until somebody took him to a police station, Makinde police station, Makinde is around that too, should he? Because I followed up all these places I'm calling. The, he went to Makinde police station because police has no right to keep them. They brought them to a, a, a kind of place where they keep juveniles. And from that place, they took him to a magistrate court of Bodetomos in Sulere and they remanded him at that place because I followed his, um, his um, a file. And how did I get to know this boy? So I, he, because you know, when you go, because we are dealing with human beings, it's not something you do in the laboratory. You do what we call pre-test. 
So when I came, I checked them. I gave them questionnaire. Then I talked to them and I gave them another questionnaire. So in between, I did the intervention. So one of the days where we were talking, I asked them, what did you people cook? And who are the people that cook very well? So that boy raised his hand. And all the, all the other ones said that he can cook well. He's from Akwaibom. So I asked them what they cook, they told me. So I then asked him, why, why did you come to the man's home here? Yeah. He told me this story. Because I want you to learn something, please. Be, don't, eh, when a child is talking to you, don't shut that child up. It's important. So when he said that, I, I marked him out. So when I finished everything, I called him and I began to interview him. And he told me this thing I told him. So I, I told him, are you sure? He said, yes. I asked him, where were you living in Onicha with your father? Before this thing happened, he told me. Then my late sister, the one that we buried on the first of, uh, 5th of January, she was alive. So I called her. I said, sister, can you go to John Cross, John Cross Street at Odao, just behind, if you know Onicha, behind Sacred Heart, Catholic Church. I told her, this is um, um, undergoing... At that point, I have finished the pilot study. When I did the pilot study, I did it with a, 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 an, a, a, another correctional center at Yaba. I also met a boy. The boy said he threw away, he lost the mother, the mother's money. He went to sell something and he lost, is it about 500 naira? So the mother sent him out to go and get that money. So he started roaming the street by the Time you know is he met friends, he, he was gone until he was brought to that um, that correctional center. So my sister went. I'm telling you this story before I will begin to read out of it so that you pay attention. My sister went because the, the boy gave the name of the father. My sister went to that address and met the father. When my sister met the father and told and asked him, Are you the father of so so so? The man said yes. And my sister said, Why is your son? The man said this, the son got missing six months ago. They have not heard from him. They have not seen him. That he was, he was not sure whether he was alive or still or dead. That the man that he gave to the, the, the boy even accused him of taking the boy and maybe hiding him to extort money from him, something like that. My sister said, your son is alive. The man couldn't believe it. Until my sister called me, I spoke to the father. To cut the long story short, I left the PhD Keneko I was doing. I was pursuing this case. I spoke the, with the father. I went back to the facility. I told them I've got the father of this boy. That this boy wasn't just delinquent roaming the streets. This is what happened. And the, the father had not been to Lagos for, his, for the first time in his life. I told him to go to GUO, enter a, a bus coming to Lagos. I told him where to stop. If he stopped there, just call me. I told him to stop at Ido. Called, and when he called me that he has arrived, I went there. I picked him up. I went to that facility. But before then, they have told me that that, that Fashola was still a governor of Lagos State. They told me that even Fashola cannot remove, cannot take this boy away from the facility. That he was remanded through the court. So he must be released through the court. I said, no, Alan, just book for the court section. I went to the court. So, but before then, I brought the father. So when the, before I brought the father, I told the, the, the handlers that have, have got this boy's father. And that day, I put the phone on speaker. Everybody was there. I asked the boy, if you hear your son, if you, if you hear your father's voice, can you identify the, the voice? He said, yes, ma'am. So that day I told the teachers, all of us were in the, their staff room, kind of. So I placed a call because I told him I wouldn't be going there until so, so, so. At this point, at this uh, time, I will call you, just be, be ready, save my number. So I called the man. The man picked him. Immediately he picked the call. The, fact, the boy said he called him daddy in their, and spoke their dialect. All the teachers were crying because they couldn't believe me. You know, a, a PhD student that came to do uh, this is, to do her PhD, the, the, um, uh, do her uh, research, 
in going and because I left what I was doing because children are important to me. I would have been a street child. I, as you are looking at me, if not for the mercy of God, if not that God used my aunt, a reverend sister of the Catholic order. I even told her she would be 81 this year. She will be 82, not 81. God used her to deliver me because at that point in my life, I, 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 I was bent on leaving the house to anywhere God knows. So I'm always very, very passionate when I see such children. After I told him to speak in English so that other people will hear. So he asked him, are you alive? He was just asking me, are, he, are you alive? The boy was saying, daddy, I'm alive, I'm alive. It's one mommy, that's me now, that came to their school and began the process. The man came to Lagos. I went and put him somewhere because at that point I was in, this, I was in school. Then the next day, we all went to the courts. And when the case file was brought up, the people said they don't know me that he's a, a, a PhD student from University of Lagos that on the left what she was doing to ensure that this boy was released to the father. And then they called the father, he stayed in the witness bus, and they called, they said, please, where is the PhD student? Is she in the courts? And they said, yes. So they told me, then they are not, they have not started, uh, they have not started calling me doctor. They said, please, Mrs. Molisa, can you stand? I stood. And after interrogating the father, everything, everything, they, they, they released him. When they released him to the father, they warned him that if for any reason that boy moves out of the house again, they will let go that is his Lagos state boy, as far as he was here, that Lagos state will come after him and the prison will be his next place. So he pleaded, he begged, he was, he was even weeping. At the end of the day, they released him. All of us still went back and they derobed him because they, they put uniform on them. I told him when he was coming to get his clothes because he has already maybe gone just buy a few things. So they derobed him and then that derobement means that he is now out of that facility. So he won, he won Mufti. I, I wasn't driving. You see, and when you have passion about something, don't allow, you know, many people don't do charity work because they, they always look for who will pay the money. At times, go out of your way to do something just to glorify God. You understand? I took them, this boy, the father, all of us, we entered bus. I took them to Ekesen and they took night bus. I gave them, I gave the father money to buy food and they went home. The next day, it was me that didn't follow up for some reason. I don't know why. Because that boy told me that he wants to be a lawyer, that he will be helping people when people are in this kind of situation. And he kept communicating because the father took that boy to see my sister. My sister told me one day, he came with that song. Very fine young man. He will be getting to 18 now or 21. So that was how this one was rescued. Another one, I, I three of them like that, I made sure that they left the facility. So now I want to, I want us to, it's an emotional episode, this episode 186. Because of so many things that had happened, you had a 16 year old kill the mother because of money ritual, 16, one six. Another 18 year old killed the mother and slept with her corpse because a ritualist told him, that's what he will do, then he will have money. Another one, a mother killed the daughter and asked the son, to sleep with her and then suck her vagina and then throw her into the river. This one happened in Lagos here. It was on when they were carrying the cops to throw inside the river that, you know, police, normal police, stop and search. So they searched the vehicle and found out, excuse me, and found the body of that girl. And the boy said, it's my mother that poisoned her and told me to do this so that they will have money. Another one, killed the mother yesterday. 
today is 14th. He killed the mother yesterday. And he, he was the only son of a royal, his royal highness somewhere in River State. Why did he kill the mom? He told the mom to give him 10,000. He wanted to go and take illicit straw. The woman refused. He used machet and macheted the mother to death. I don't know whether you hear these stories. And another student in, in London from Coventry University, it, there was a video that came online. A 21-year-old Nigerian student studying in Coventry. Coventry is a university in, in England. She was in, she, she was part of the, they were four, part of the group that herself and the lady drugged a man. You know why they drugged that man? They used to see him on Instagram wearing Rolex watches without knowing that those Rolex watches were fake. You see, why I'm telling us this? I want you to have sober reflection. Things are going haywire. And these youths, they need help. The time I did this study for my PhD was, wow, you know, it will be my, my defense was what I was counting as 12 years. But I did this study. So it's more than maybe 40 years now, or let's say 14 years. To, for you to know what is happening in this age and generation. This girl, the talks is business because even the police said she was venerable. And from the answer she gave, I just came to, uh, you know, she was speaking for me, just came to the, camp, uh, the college to get my this, this, this. By the time they started showing her, they still pictures and everything from the scene of the accident. She, you know, if you watch that, for those of you in my um, in my broadcast list, broadcast list, I sent it. You see where she will say no comments, no comments, no comments, because the hood, the coat she wore that night, they saw it in her wardrobe. You know, it's not in in this part of nation where everything is jaga jaga. They did a proper. After ten weeks, they found her guilty and she was jailed because the police. Officer said, she was laughing. She said, they lied to me. That girl now, you know what pain me? At the point they put her to the, to, to the her cell, she said, is this how my life is? Oh my God. She made another statement. I will be disappointing my mother. Oh my God. And on this note, I want to celebrate all the mothers in the house. Today is Happy Mother's Day. But may we not, because that woman, the, the mother of this girl, may see it the way we saw it. She may not even know that the doctor was involved in any cr criminal activity. The only saving grace for that young girl in London the police checked the record. They say she has no previous criminal record. That this is the first. But even at that first, you see why they went after that guy. I want you to pay attention. Those of you that flaunt your children on social media, I stopped it two years ago. The earth is still the world. is filled with wickedness. Small child, you celebrate birthday, you put everything about that child. I stopped. I was doing it until one day. I read something and I said, no, I need my children to be shielded from the public. Because she was on Instagram and seeing a particular man, man wearing Rolex watches. Do you know that the Rolex watches were even fake? You know what my daughter said when I sent the thing to our group? She said, mommy, contentment remains the key. If you are contented with what you have, you don't have any reason to go and look for something from somebody or to say, take something that belongs to somebody else. So I don't know whether you are getting value with what I'm sharing with us. If you are getting value, please can you type two on the chat box? Thank you very much. I want to use this because I want to tell us about the youth. You may have, you may have had children that are married. 
That's why we will leave. There will be conversation. You tell us what happened, how you were able to do what you did, what happened at a particular time, and how the child that had the child's life turned around. Now, this lady presented this paper. I didn't know the, the time now, but it's old. But this thing should be up to 10 years, more than 10 years. So I it was a program called Youth as Agents of Change. What we are seeing now, are they agents of change? Are they, they are agents of destruction? Are they agents of change? You know, it's not that somebody killed somebody. That's on, on, on a, another plane. See a child killing the mother, mother, go, 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 God forbid. Because he wants to, how old is the child? 18. The other one, 16. Teen, teenagers, youths. If he can kill the mother to, for money ritual, do you think he can kill anybody? The one that killed, there were two. The 18-year-old was from Delta. The 16-year-old was from Osho. You know what the Delta one said? He didn't do anything to me. It was the native doctor that told me that the only way I could make money was to kill her. This is a woman that takes care of him, puts him through school. Has he finished schooling before he's thinking about money? Has he finished schooling before he will think about money? Thank you so very much for joining me. My name is Mo Lisa Fevoa from Achuku, and the program is Great Life with Dr. Afoma, and it airs every Sunday evening by 8 p.m. Nigerian time. Today, we are talking about the happen happenings in our society, the disturbances, the scary stories we hear about our teenagers going out of their way to commit crimes, crimes that are, that are heart-wrenching, that, that will, will make your head so swear. So I want to go through factors that influence you as agents of change. So who are the youths? I've told us their, their age range. Let's take them up from 12 to 21. Let's just pinch, pick them within this window of 12, 13, 14, 15 to 21. The youths are said to be critical in the growth and development of any nation. Youths can be agents of positive change if properly mentored. The problem we have is that many youths are not mentored. They are not mentored. Nobody to look up to. The society, you saw what happened, I think yesterday, the son of the late fella, Shehukuti, slapped a uniform, a policeman in uniform, a policeman in uniform. The kind of slap, the man's, the man, the man's head shifted. And do you know that some adults were even supporting him? They even said that in England, that even the king, King Charles, has no right to slap a policeman. The king of England, not to talk of a refrat, because he's a musician, slapping a policeman in uniform. Now, the IG of police has ordered for his arrest. You see, because that's what we are crying over in Nigeria, the culture of impunity, the culture of impunity, the culture of rascality. Even if that policeman did, but, but just video, the one that, the policeman that flogged a man at Portacourt, they got the video. One of them was derobed, uh, demoted. Another place, they, 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 they derobed him. They sent him out of police station, um, police uh, institution. So you will see, because when things are not, you know, when the value of a thing is not known, abuse, they say it's the youth, before they could be agents of uh, positive change, they must be mentored. Who is mentoring your children? Are you a mentor to them? I have shared a story here with us. When my daughter was in, 
in secondary school, she was about living. And they told them in their yearbook, who are your mentors? She, she said, be Gates because she loved computers. And she said, be Gates. Was I happy with that? I wasn't. I wasn't happy. How can my be Gates that she doesn't know? Because the man is into computer, Microsoft. Will, where will be Gates lecture him? You understand? So I, I, I pray for you, mother. May you never die because of, may you never die. The death of moms eh, have experienced such. The death of mothers is very, very critical in the life and development of a child. I was reading a book spread by King Ch Ch um, Le 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 Princess Diana's second son, Princess and Charles Diana's second son. Harold, her name is Harold, but they said they were just calling him Harry. The person that gave me that book, because I even want, wanted to get the hard copy until I muted it to my cousin I visited in our office. And the lady that came in said, I have the uh, soft copy, if you don't mind. So I said, please send it to me. He was just, you know, abusing the guy, saying that guy, this, that, that, that. I didn't say anything because I've not read the book. But the moment I began to read the book, I began to cry for that boy. Harry was 12 years when Diana was killed. And the circumstances that led to her leaving the palace, to traveling to Paris and meeting a friend, Keniko Keniko, and all the paparazzi moving after her and everything, she died. My heart began to go after that boy. I, I, I was weeping for him because they don't know the pain in that boy's heart. He said that they told him that the moment they had him, when the father came to the hospital, the father said to the mom, thank you, one great, one, no, wonderful. Thank you, you have given me a hair, a hair and a spare. So that was why he named that his book, Spare. So as far as he's concerned, he's not in the question of things. And so many things we make that boy to think that way. I just started reading that book and I was, I was feeling so bad because he said, September of that year, he turned 13. How everything went. So let's not, some parents are encouraging their children to make it big without working hard and sacrifice. Teach your children the word of the Lord. That's what one of the things we would talk about tonight. So let me read this. It's a paper she presented, but when I when I was asking the Lord, what do I talk about this time? He said, talk about what is happening and reiterate it and let it be known that we mothers, parents, we still have something tangible something to do in the lives of our children. Factors that influence youth as agents of change. Number one, battle of the mind, battle of their mind. The greatest battle takes place in our minds. The youth have daily battles to deal with. Any youth that can conquer the battle that goes on in their mind can be an agent of change in any nation. Many of this is what she wrote. Anytime I will read what she wrote and I'll put my top now. Many times we don't pay attention. We don't pay attention. A child that, that committed suicide said the moment she began to be withdrawn, nobody noticed until she took her life. The one that when I was a guidance counselor in a school here in Lagos State, before I went for my PhD, a child came to me, she, no, she saw a teacher, heavily pregnant teacher, and the teacher was teaching. And the teacher made mention of virginity, staying chest till you are married. The child was furious. By the time you know it, she said that that teacher will die in, with that child, with, uh, with the pregnancy. And when the teacher heard it, they reported the child to me. I said, don't worry, I have heard you go. I will, I will speak with her and I will call you back. 
And when the teacher left with the children that, you know, uh, crucify her, crucify her, I came, I told them, oh yeah, everybody go. I, I made her very comfortable and I began to ask her. I told her something must have pushed you into saying this. And this girl opened up something she has never told anybody, living or dead. She told me that they live at Badagri. And the mother, I think, was their father dead? I don't know whether their father is dead, but the mother usually keeps them. She travels to buy goods she sells for their upkeep. So that day, the father, the, the, the mother usually keeps them with an uncle. When they come back from school, she will prepare their food, keep in that uncle's place. They will go there, eat herself and her junior one. That day, she says she, she, they came back, they finished eating, but she was having headache. I think she was seven. She was seven. When she was telling me this story, she was 15. Because she was already in SS. Is it just SS3? Just SS3. She told me that that day, when, because she was feeling headache, she laid down. All of a sudden, she found that there is an object entering her vagina. So she woke up. When she woke up, she saw that the uncle tied her hand on the bed and was raping her. She said she was seven. And the man told her, if you tell anybody, you will die. And this girl never told anybody. But she said, because when that teacher was teaching and she knew she has lost her virginity, she was furious. So she directed that anger to that teacher. She told me that she lives with the uncle now that she has not told the mother this. Cancel her because I know you love us. That's why I want to tell you. Please beg that teacher to forgive me. I did not say it to her because I hated her. I said it to her because of the pain in my heart. I tell you the truth. Be careful of who comes to your houses. Uncle, uncle this, uncle that, uncle this. Tell, teach your children from when they are growing up, to call people by their names. And there is no uncle except that person is your brother or the brother of your husband. Please. Don't act. You know, when my children were growing up, it's nothing like, um, I will call you Mr. Peter, Mr. This, Mr. Roberts. And another incident that happened, that girl was grown. Every time the mother will be beating her because she doesn't pay attention to the less, lesson teacher. The, let, the, girl, the young girl told me, anytime this man will come to teach, he will bring out his penis and be telling me to touch it. When I, I knock, I know I will switch off, he will go to my mother to report. This one was in excess at that time. Because God helped me when I was in that school. It was a, it, it's a girl, all girls school. I, I was, I, I look for employment after my master's just to teach English. Something happened in the school. The, the students will, when a particular teacher enters the class, they will all leave. So when they call the management, everybody, okay, the, the, the sister, the reverend sister saw my, saw my CV and saw that I had, I did, I have a master's in guidance and counseling. So she made me the counselor for the junior school. You know, at that point, Lagos they say separate junior school from the senior school. They have head teacher, yeah. They, they have head teacher, they have sectional health. Just like that. That was how I was able to have the office where I interact with these students. So that student came to me and told me, counselor, why, why, why are you different from my mom? Why is my mom different from you? You pay attention. My mother doesn't pay attention. And this girl told me this. He said, but my mother can't, she, she will not believe me because she, will, she will thought I made up the story. She won't believe me. So I said, what do you think you can do? I said, I don't know. Cancel anything you know how to do. I am ready. So I, I, I told her, I will call your mom. So I called the mom. The mom came over to my office. I told her, this is what your daughter said, but don't worry. You know what you do, go out as other times but go and pack your car outside. 
be in the house. So I agreed with the daughter and herself that the moment the teacher brings out his penis again, she will just make one sound, maybe. <coughs> <coughs> so I lost the mom. And that was what we did. The mother, because the, 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 the lesson teacher knew that the mother is not always at home at that particular point. So she came back, took the car somewhere else, was in the house. And they usually do this um, lesson upstairs. They are part of upstairs in the dining. So the mother was in the room. The lesson teacher did not know the mother was in the room. So he began the pranks again. The child was, you know, at that point was playing along, you know. By the time he just removed his trousers, only with his boxer, he thought that I uh, uh, have got meat to chew today. And he has brought down his boxer and was showing dangling the penis before the girl like this. The girl just said, <laughs> the moment she did that, the next thing, the mother opened the door. It's not that, I'm not telling anything I'm telling you is real life. The mother caught the lesson teacher boxers down. The woman just stood like this. She told me, cancel up. I froze to death. I froze to death. Cancel up. I froze. In short, that she couldn't talk. She couldn't move. Hey, 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 hey. The daughter said, the daughter was doing like this. So by the time they came back to my office, the mother said, I don't know how much money they are paying you here. But my God in heaven will reward you. So you see, pay attention. Pay attention. That was a time when my children were small. Every time the lesson teacher will come. One day, I just pretended that I, I was sleeping. I was lying on the couch. And by the time he made one sound, I said, Mr. Robert, and what's the meaning of that? He got the shock of his life. A Ghanaian. I said, you don't try it with my children. Or not under my watch. I have sent my nephew away from my house because I, there were some things I, I, I didn't understand with him. I don't care. Because if anything happens, I will kill that my nephew. And the police, will, the government will call, come after me. So pay attention. Now, battle of their mind. So many things are distracting children. So many vices. Yahoo, Yahoo. Now, then there was no Yahoo Yahoo. Yahoo Yahoo. The media, the telephone. Do you know that a telephone can, can destroy a child? Did you see that video that went viral during COVID? That time, children were not going to school. Three siblings having sex. One will be, one will be uh, um, on, on, on the floor. The other one will be um, on top. Three siblings. Three, I don't say uh, one, two, three. The same mother, the same father. Do you know what your children are doing with the telephone in their hands? You just buy phone for them. You work at the go. Do you know a child can, can get a, a porn site using the phone? There was a time this old is a metal for a school teacher because the teacher told the child not to call. But you know how you know there's a way God does their things, does his things. Ulisa Metu was caught to size. And people say, are you not the person that went to fight a teacher because the teacher told your, your son or your daughter not to come to school? So you see, you have to pay attention. The days are evil. The days are evil. In short, after reading these things this week, I was, I was really, really down. I began to pray, Jehovah, help us. Help us. Because we don't know where the world is going to. There was another incident. A child gave birth to a child, killed the child, and went some a little girl went somebody went somewhere to dump the, the corpse. They caught her, told her, go and bring that, go and bring that cattle. He brought the she brought the cattle and the dead child was there. Why killing that child? Why don't just go to a church and dump that child there? Somebody looking for child. Can, can adopt that child. Why killing the child? Is it no wickedness? Is it no wickedness? Is it no wickedness? Kill the child.
And they may not even know she, because if you see how tiny she was, you may not know she's the, the because I was surprised when I saw the video. You know, they say, go and bring that cattle, open that cattle. She used some like grasses to cover it. The child was already there with an umbilical cord, showing you that she may have just had that baby. What's going on? Now, the battle of their minds. Number two, discovering purpose. Discovering purpose. Youths need, youths need to discover their purpose of existence in order to avoid aimless living. There is an assignment for everyone, and if the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. When my children were growing up, I'm not saying I have the best of them, but at least I have relative peace. At a point, I stopped them from watching television. Then it wasn't 24 hours. So, like now, you have Netflix, I mean Netflix. Excuse me, you have this, you have this, you have this. I told them, everybody, go and pick a, a program you watch. And they all picked, uh, what's this program? This children's program. Mm. One foreign children's program. On Thursdays, it ends by four because they don't do lesson on Thursdays. They will, I disconnected everything from the television. I put it in my wardrobe. I told them, when, you, when it is that time, come, I'll give it to you. They will fix, watch, they will disconnect everything and bring to me. I gave them a book to read. That book is Think Big by Ben Carson. That Ben Carson now is a, is a medical doctor. He's one of the people that successfully separated Sesame's twins at John Hopkins uh, Hospital in America. They, their mother was a single, it's not she's a single. The woman discovered the husband got married without telling her, so she left with the two boys. She was a cleaner in one of the offices. So every time she says she'll be cleaning, she will see the orgasm coming to, do, to, to work doing pam, 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 pam. She said to herself, one day my own, this of my two boys, we were, we were, they will, they will be working like this. And how did she get it done? She said she sent them because she doesn't have money for books. She sent them to, to public library to be reading instead of playing around. And today, the two of them, they are well known. So you, you, I don't know whether you are listening to me. You have toddlers, you have children, you have to, you have adolescents. Pay attention, especially when you have a girl child. Oh, the first black man to break the cycle of discrimination in USA. You see, I'm, pay attention. If you have girl children, your work is more. Another, I'm not in short. Let us do because if I keep telling you what is happening. We will not go to what to what to. So you see, give them books to read. Make sure that you allow those children to have good self-worth. Don't talk down on your children. Anofia, idiots. Ulush, Anything you don't want your child to become, don't say it to her or him. Because these ones are vulnerable ones. See that a 21 year old. I always tell people, don't send your children to school if they have not done their first degree in Nigeria. But some parents will send their children to school in primary school overseas with no, no, no adult supervision. Our bishop, Bishop Odebo, will tell you, if you send a child in primary school to overseas, you have lost that child. That child can do drugs. See this away. If you look at her, for her to say, oh, I will be disappointing my mother, shows you and she will say, oh my God, that girl must have been raised in a church. So let them cause them to discover people's rights on time. It will help them. They can, you can make them drummers in the church. They, you, they can sing, they can play basketball. They can make sure they can play badminton. That's why on Saturdays, if I see parents bring their children to all kinds of, I, I like it because that's a diversion. From the norm, by the time the child gets home, he's tired, he will sleep. Today, they will go to church. Monday, go to school. That's Saturday. Instead of some, some, some mothers will put eyelash as long as this Bible, this Bible, onto their children, toddler, going to party. 
and they will wear the bomb shorts and they will win, wind in their waist like, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, no. I remember the story in Oka and Ambra State. A woman, she, she is named after one prominent street in Oka. That woman was killed by her son. The son shot her in the presence of the grandmother. Why? Over pampering. Nah, nah. You see, if you have if you have an only son, pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. So that that boy will not kill you. Nah. He, that one wasn't even the only son, but just the last child. Pampering him up and down. The child began to do, do, do drugs. By the time you know it, he began to sell the mother's jewelry. He would take her earrings, go and say, drink, smoke. He would go and say, what, smoke. By the time, because this one that killed the mother yesterday, I'm telling you yesterday, 13th of May, 2023, in Portacourt. She went to them. He came to the mother and told the mother to give the, the, to give her money, to give him money to go and use. The mother said she doesn't have money. You know what he did? He went to their father's room. I think their father was there. Carried his his gun on the mother. Took whatever he wanted to take. He drove out with the car. If not that the mother's mother, that's the grandmother, was in the house, it may take time for them to discover who killed him, the mom. A prominent woman, I'm telling you, a society, a, a very, a, a woman of honor. That was how the, this woman, you know, he drove that car from Oka to Benin and went to the police station and reported himself. He said, I just killed my mother. They thought he was joking. They told them I killed my mother and they took him and they found that it was true. So, there was a case of one that butchered the father. Those of you that know redeem camp, redemption camp, this redeem camp, it went viral time that time. A son of a son, they came, he was doing drugs. They rusticated him. No, not even rustication. They suspended him from the university. And the, the father came from Abuja at the, the minister's conference or something. And he saw the boy, he was asking the boy. The boy was, you know, the, the father slapped him. You know what the, the guy told the father? Don't try it again. He said, what do you mean? He went to the kitchen. The father went to the kitchen and, and brought spatula. This thing they used to turn garden and hit him. You know what? The next thing, that guy went to the kitchen, brought kitchen knife. Ha! Not only that he killed the father, he cut, you know the way butcher, butchers cut meat? He cut the father into pieces, put him in a bag of rice, dragged the body to one small canal there. It was in the morning. People knew the man came for that their meeting and saw trail of blood from his house. So they were calling him, calling him on the phone. He didn't answer. When they broke even, oh, Pastor Tai said, very true. I, I, you know, I anything use, I follow up. But charge the father. You know, you know, I tell people, once your son or your daughter is on drug, don't think it's that small child you will get back to. You are dealing with gunpowder that will explode. Another one killed the father and the mother at a, 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 a jibo here in Lagos. Drug. Just tell me what will make somebody to kill the mother, if not over the influence of something. So point these children out to the their peoples on earth, it will help to cope it. Then there is a question every youth must answer, which is, why am I existing? Why am I existing? If any youth can answer this question, they can become global agents of change. If you are in the, in the ministry of teenage ministry, you have something, you have a lot to do. But I'm not pushing everything to you because parents can't abdicate their duty for you to do in the church. Charity, they say, begins from home. So all of us, we need to pay attention. If you are getting value from our discussion tonight, please can you type three on the chat. Number, number three, these are factors that influence you as agents of change. Number three, understand the environment. Understand the environment. I tell you the truth, there are some environments you can raise a child successfully. You see me, there was a place when my children were still small, 
my husband said that we call the name Festag. If you are not careful in Festag, eh, you raise, you raise, if you raise your children in Festag and they turn out well, be thanking God every day of your life. Festag is a very, very volatile area of raising children. See Festag, see Mushi, see Ajegunle. Because the environment, the envi except your children don't go out to mix up, except that. They just, you carry them to school, you carry them back home, take them to church. If you allow them, do you know that you can have a sound child with the mixing, with the environment, that child will turn bad. I always ask people, nature and nurture, controversy, nature, which one is, which one affects children more? People will say nature. If you have a child that you call you and raise that child that mushy and have a child that mushy and raise that child that you call you, their birthplace won't have much to do with your upbringing, but their environment. That's, that's what we call nurture. So the environment can influence a youth positively or negatively. There are so much influences the youth face a daily that bring about challenges. What are these? Examples of daily influences. Number one, parental influence. Some parents are bad themselves. Some, you see some parents, they are bad parents. And there was a book I was writing. The book is almost, I've read it twice, but I've not published it. You know the title of the book? There are no bad children. There are only bad parents. The first day somebody saw that, he said, Doki, what do you mean? I say there are no bad children. There are bad parents. Ask yourself, what kind of parents are you? What do you wear? As a mother, you want to wear dress and all your breasts are showing. What are you? What? So a young girl coming up. That your laps will be showing up and down. And you call it fashion. You are, you are, see the one that went to do uh, uh, like post discussion, I'll be like school, keneko, keneko. Now things are going, what, jaka, jaka. Eh? You have bombo. You want to add bombo to your bombo, the way God made you. Because you see, eh, all these people that go for body this, body that, the hallmark is low self esteem. Like post discussion, yes, low self esteem. If you love yours, you see me, I'm big. And I'm proud of who I am. In as much as I work hard to make sure that within this, my frame, I live healthy. But that's not, I wouldn't know, go and look for maybe some, I, I read about one that said he, he want to have cat eye like this. You see the way I'm pushing my eye. And the thing was causing problem. One is in my size place. If you see the eyelash, this leg pulls, it's like as long as my eyes. So I think two days ago, I saw her with Regis eye. I said, what happened to her? And she said, it's her daughter's soap. It's not any her daughter's soap. It's those things she used to. One, one, five. I was just saying, if this woman could put this, you could imagine what the daughter would be putting. Parental influence. Number two, peer influence. Who and who are working with your children? Who do they move, out, move about with? Who do they move about with? Number three, media influence. Media influence. You see the, the place, media place in this world and age now. Number four, academic influence. I want to tell you that your daughter or your son is coming 24 out of 25 in the class. Not the, it's not the end of life. Check and look at what that child does very well and encourage him. You know, it's only in Nigeria that, you know, we are so certificated. The, 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 excuse me. The assessment of a child must not be based only with the academic performance. There is a child that is good with, in football. Just encourage that person to get the... A woman told me this story. A woman told me that Finland people came to University of Lagos because they, I know she must have retired now. She was teaching at university staff school. 
she said they, they, they came to talk to them that in Finland, you don't start school until you are seven years. Is this seven or be nine? That's when you start nursery. That they came and saw, they, um, they came and saw small, small children in school. He said, you don't start school until you are nine. I be 13. I didn't know whether he's 13. The one told me. And that's why when they go, when they begin to go to, they already know where they, they, they fit in. Look at what happened in Singapore. Have you read that book from three, third world country to first world country? They told them, you can't have children except to have a degree. And we need to know what and what and where and where you fit in. Here we, we breed children anyhow. You look for someone to look at your children, look at her, and you still stress them up for nothing. Then influence of role models. Some people look at people. It was today I heard that Bella wedded 27 wives on a particular day because they were talking about a show. They said your wife, your, 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 your mother was one of the 27. See how your life is. You, you see, influence of role models. That was why when my daughter said it, it was a, a Bill Gates, I said, God, this is an error. It's an error. During this year's 2023 um, International Women's Day, my com the company where my daughter works showcased five women. My daughter is the only black. And when they asked her, what's your inspiration? She said, my mom. Because she bought us the first computer. I did, I wasn't working. I was just doing petty, petty business. But when I saw that computer came out, I saved money. It was 88,000, but it's like 880,000 to me then. I was giving the woman that the, they sell the computer, I will 5,000, I will give her 10,000 until I brought it. Because I don't want when they go out, they will, they will look like mumus seeing computer. They, they ask her what, because she's in, she's in tech. They call it women in tech. And they, they said, they said, they are the top, top women, great women. When I, I say my daughter don't enter great, women list. They asked them, what informed your decision? She said, I know. And I was happy. I was happy. How can she say Bill Gates that she doesn't know? She said, my mom. Today, when she was wishing me my happy Mother's Day, she used strong words. And I was happy. What just came out of my mind? Thank you, Jesus. So please be role models to your children. Please, if you are getting value from what we are, what we are discussing this night, please can you type a four? And if you are joining me for the first time, this is great life with Dr. Afoma and great life as every Sunday evening by 8 p.m. Nigerian time. Here we talk about everything and anything that contains or pertains to life, godliness, and your health. Because when your children are not doing well, you won't be healthy. Thank you. So every, every Sunday by 8 p.m., you meet us here. Then the next one is influence alcohol. I knew when Pastor Tony Rappu, Tony Rappu is the pastor of um, this present house at Lekki. Then before he went, he left Redeem. He was the one that brought about the modern parishes in Redeem. He was the one that made Redeem to in short, to move to all areas. So Tony, at a point, said the Lord told him to go to Empire. There's a, 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 a color. Do you know the people that are there? Her prostitutes and drug addicts. He went there every Sunday. We preach to them, bring them food, bring them things. You know, you can't convert who you don't love. You don't, you, you, you don't convert who you don't love. There is a man, I have his contacts. He was a street boy because of the mother died and he said there is no God. So he, be, he, be, he ran to the streets because of maltreatment from the stepmom. This boy committed a crime. They, they, they had all, already brought time. He did pickpockets at my two. If you want, 
kindly, I will send you that man's testimony. This man was released from prison. No, he was condemned to death, but Jesus appeared because of what? University of Lagos students went to do evangelism at the prison. And when she saw it, when they see them, they hug them. You know, you don't know what hug, hugging somebody means to that person. They said all the other pastors, they will come and preach to them and go. But they saw love coming from this University of Lagos students and they gave their lives to Christ. And that man began to change. And he had a revelation. Jesus appeared to him and said, I will make you my mouthpiece. This man is still alive today. If we finish, just ask me, I'll send you the testimony. The judge war read, if you're a lawyer here, you can attest to what I'm saying. They say anytime the judge wears red, is a criminal must be condemned. So they brought Ibo Shere in Lagos here. They said at that point, because God, just because he told them, even if he dies now, he has not lost anything, that he know he will have peace. But Jesus said, I will make you my mouthpiece. He said at the point where that sentence was to be read, he saw a light enter the hall. I'm telling you a real life story. If you want, ask me, I will send you the video. A light entered the, entered the, entered, entered the court. Only him was seeing the light. And in the brightness of that light, he saw Jesus walking. You know, eh? if, you are, if you have not given your life to Christ, I'm not telling you about church. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, please make it this night. He said in that light, he was walking. He was walking in the light. And he, he himself was the only one seen. He was already on the witness bus with handcuff like this. Then Jesus walked. But before Jesus came, he, he said he saw at the four corners of the, of the court, he saw angels, big beings with um, flames of salt. He saw them positioned before that light came. When that light came, he said Jesus walked majestically. He was seeing it only him. Majestically and went to the judge and put his hand on the judge. At the point, he put his hand on the shoulder of the judge. The judge said, to the registrar and other judges. This boy has been condemned to death, but don't you think from the testimony we have from the prison warden at Kirikiri and the testimonies we had about him, don't you think this boy would be a role model to the youth to teach them how not to do crime? The other person said, it's true. This man was, you know, eh, he was acquitted and discharged. There and then, and they told him to, the way he said, Lazarus, lose him and let him go. They lose him. He said he can't believe it when he ran out of it. He said, so I am free. People began to look for this man. If you want, call, chat me, I'll send you the video. He's a minister now. He's married now with children. If you get this man to speak to your youth, the one doing drug, the one doing cultism, the one doing um, pickpocket, the one doing papa. Uh, you will, you will save a lot of souls. Because anybody that deals with you, I follow up. That's me. Then, it, sex influence. Ah, the video is getting too long again. Influence of sex. The life of an ego, there are five Ds. There are five Ds that we always need to incorporate. You know, I didn't write this paper. I'm just reading it. There are five Ds. In the life of an angel, number one, discipline. Any child that's not disciplined will go far. You as a mother, how disciplined are you or a father? Ask yourself, do you stick to one thing and do it without falling on the road, falling away? This is our episode 100. percent At a point, my daughter told me, your consistency in this program, I'm letting uh, sit down, let me talk to you. So you have to be consistent, discipline, discipline. We did a business. I keep telling people, pay attention. They were calling me Madam, pay attention. Told them that thing may not last forever. Jack Robinson, something happened. When they see me, they say, you told us. Discipline, number two, decision. You must make up your mind what you want. 
Number three, diligent. Many of us are not diligent. Number four, dedicate. Dedication. You have to be dedicated. Number five, dare to dream. If a child tells you, I want to play drum, don't say, don't go and play drum. Allow that person, even if it's football. You see these co-curricular activities, they are very good at distracting students, children from vices. The only thing you have to know who they are going to so that you will not even take them to the wolves that will finish them. Then number five, mentorship. The impact of good mentors are very essential in aiding the youth of this generation. We lack good mentors in the 21st century, and this is seriously affecting our youth. The wrong people mentor them, and it's dangerous to our society. Then number six, leadership. Today, a leader leads the people and they follow. But today, a lot, of, a lot is going on in the 21st century leadership. So much corruption and unfair decisions are being made. The youths are asking so many questions about today's leadership. What policies are functional today for the youth? How can the impact of the youth be felt in the nation where their voices are silenced? You saw what is happening. You saw, you see what is happening. During the la last election, the youth gathered themselves together and they began to fight a cause. I'm telling you. They asked one one day, he said it's not about tribe. I don't even know where, who the man is, but I'm telling you, I'm fed up. I'm tired. Leadership. If you are not praying for Nigeria, please be praying. It's not over until it's over. How can the youth become a agents of change in a nation that the youth are not valued? You see somebody, the girl that made the highest, um, the highest mark in jump. I think uh, in Anambra State, I think that's one in Anambra, Newi, Anglican girls, Newi, Innocent Motors gave her three million. Three million. Hmm? If you say now that that girl, Are we still there? I noticed that. Let me finish up. Please, if you can hear me, can you type five? five. I just found out that. I just found out that. I just found out that. Bye. I don't know. Okay. So, then the seventh one, trust in God. This no. generation of youth, then the seventh one, trust in God. This no. generation of youth, then the seventh then, one, trust okay. in God. Uh, let me see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's all about it. That's why they were selling the Okay. 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 I don't know what's happening. So if you can hear me, please, can you type five? We're almost there. We're almost at the end. Uh, okay, thank you. So the seventh one, trust in God. This generation of you have to develop total trust in God and not in man or themselves. For with God, they can become agents of global change. God bless the use of this generation as they become agents of global change. This presentation was made by Joy Bora, but I infuse my thoughts. There are some scriptures she listed out. If you, can, if you have your Bible, you can put them down. Proverbs 3 5. Proverbs 3 5. Second Chronicles 21 to 37. Genesis 1 26 to 28. Genesis 20, 39. Remember the story of Joseph, how Joseph was even hated by his own brothers. And at the end of the day, 
at the at the end of the day, somebody is saying something. Doctor, you are talking about the girl that scored highest in jam before your network. Okay. Okay, I said innocent, innocent. This man that produces cars in New gave the girl three million. So I said if he's in nonsense, BB Niger or nonsense, nonsense. Now you see people giving, uh, that's where you see Kubana, Kubana, them, them, giving, throwing money like this. So when somebody is in, to any money, normally the person will feel I need to be throwing uh, stacks of cash. You know, there are certain things that corrupt the minds of children. So Joseph, despite everything, Joseph kept the Prime Minister of Egypt. Tell children to be patient. Life is in physics. And life, uh, life is in phases, and men in sizes. A short girl can get pregnant, have children. A, a huge one like me, the same thing. So it's not about see the fingers, they are not equal. Then This is our episode 186. And for 186 times I've been on this set. I thank you so very much. Please, let's make it another date next week, Sunday by 8 p.m. At this point, if you have any contributions to make, the floor is yours. I am more a favor a former triple. And by God's grace, I have a PhD in guidance and counseling from the University of Lagos 12 years ago. I was called to the Ministry of Health and Wellness the name of the ministry is Healthy Race Ministry International. And Healthy Race, this program is powered by Healthy Race. So every Sunday, we're always here. So if you have any contributions, can make it now. Thank you so very much. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, I was saying a thing about mentoring at the same time taking care of the people that are have rejected by the society that I know about Tony Rappo. Uh, at one time we were doing that type of thing, going to where the guys, the drug guys are <laughs> with this girl, um, what's her name again, uh, Rosalind, you know, we did those things all over the place. It, it's a good thing, you know, you have to humble yourself to be able to win people who are drug addicts to go, be a kind of humble person that not being proud and arrogant, you can't win them because you, you, the one look at what Paul said when he go to the play, being yourself the same how they are, so you can be able to win them for God and all that. All the story you tell today is written. The Bible says, last days, perilous times shall come. All these killings, the people, uh, where a girl had a child and threw the child in a basket and gone through it where people pick. It's so many things that are that on, on hard for easy, strange stuff that strange you can't happen. believe. You are you, really you when people pamper their children think that oh my child only one child one child you can kill that one child by yourself. Parental upbringing matters as well. Foundation speaks a lot and volume for children. So we should learn from others. You can have money and your children become a bunch of bastards and nothing that you can write home about. Good people. One guy from my side, the father, the first permanent secretary in our village. The guy, the son came to America very early. And I think he started secondary school here. He came back with nothing. Had to, after so many years, almost even about 40 something years, he had to go to college, university, he almost said. And he, but he is dead now. The, the drug he had perforated his, his, his stomach and all that. So, what you are saying, teaching, is the reality of life. And if people can take precaution and then raise children with the fear of God, lay solid foundation for them, they will not depart from it. 
But if you start pampering them and then sugar mommy and sugar, sugar, all this, there will become something that you, you will regret. By that time, the head is off, you cannot put it back. I appreciate what you are teaching. It's fantastic and really real life. God bless you. Thank doctor, you, sir. Our personal doctor, you're blessed. <laughs> Thank you. So, oh, oh, Gabriel, oh, they said, oh, they said, this is my first time. Yeah, this is episode 180. We started this on the 22nd day of September 2019, and we have been on it. So, thank you so very much. Any other person, if you have any contributions to make this the time, please pray for your children. I am praying for mine. Pray and other ones I don't that are not even my own children. I pray for them. Thank you. Good evening, Martin. everyone. Okay, good evening, Sister good evening. Helen from this Australia. Helen from Australia. Yes, ma'am. Can go ahead, sis. Doc, Doc has been like a mother figure to me. I haven't seen her in person, but I can tell you I know her more than anything. She's so <laughs> open, honest. What drew me to her was during the Sisterhood Africa, where she said everything, she put it in play. And the way God used her to touch so many people, especially my life. There's one thing she always say, being focused and diligent, and that is my biggest failure. I'm not diligent, I'm not consistent. So, but from her, I've been pushing through and I can say, thank God, God is doing it. I have a training, I have to wake up 2 a.m. Australian time to do this coming week in America. And I know by the grace of God, that five days master class, I'm going to go through it no matter what. So in those days, <coughs> just like what she said, and even here in the Western world is the worst. Hmm. I have a son in, in, in SS, you call it SS1 now. He's choosing to be a chef. I'm supporting him when there's an exhibit on what he's going to do. We used to drive down for a while, but now the government has made it. The train ticket is even cheaper than buying petrol and driving. So we just hop on the train, go for a day trip or two days, and he goes there. And at the end of it, I said, even the last one we went was two weeks ago. There were a crowd of thousands of people. He hugged me for the first time in the presence of everybody, a teenager, telling me, thank you, mom, for bringing me. Sure. So I found out he found his passion. And most of the chef he saw in the television, he told me, mom, I saw this, I saw this. He took me to them and I told them, thank you, because you are one of those people. Whenever there's a cooking competition, he started cooking since he was nine years. All through COVID, when I was working, because I'm a healthcare worker, and his, daddy, his dad was working, he's a session. He was the one cooking food for us. We See? came back that day. On Tuesday, one of the meal, he saw one of the competition doing for Australian Chef of the Year. He cooked it for us Chai. and it was delicious, I can tell you. Chai. So parents in school, I made them know if anything happened, I want to know immediately. And that is where we parents are losing it. We are not following up on our children. We are not following up in, in the education, in their friends. And I tell him, you go out, you misbehave. I will know about it. I was in Nigeria and I told him, whatever you do, I will find out because somebody will message me on of messenger. And when I came back, I didn't hear anything because he knows there are so many eyes watching him. As a parent, I have only one assignment God gave me to lead him through his way and God will finish the work. And I pray not to fail in it. That is my prayer every day. God, don't let me fail in the only assignment you gave me as a parent. We parents are giving our rights to children. Children dictate what they eat. They dictate what they wear. They dictate everything. And you as a parent, you do it. Who are you? Are you the child or the parents? Where is your right as a parent? And that is what I keep on asking. Somebody asked me when he was five, because kids start school five years here, they go to foundation, then they have seven years of primary school before they go to secondary school. The first year, a parent asked me, why does he listen to everything you said? I said, I asked her, who is the parent? Am I the parents or he's the parents? So as the parents, there are things you don't leave for your child to do. Those are your responsibility. I tell him it's my responsibility to put a roof under your head, send you to school, clothe you, feed you, but it's not my responsibility to buy you iPhone 14 or iPhone 17 or whatever they call it. Exactly. 
Huh? You want it, you, you work for it, and you buy it. He bought a refurbished iPhone 7. He used his money. He is working now. Ooh. He used his money from his job to buy it. There are things. Huh? It's as if you are your next holiday to Nigeria, you pay for your tickets. So he will save up to do it. I'm not the first parents that done it, and I'm not going to be the last. Wow. He's an only son. I'm not going to fail in him. My no. husband was an only son. He cooked. He, he, he arranged the house more than a woman. He's even a better housekeeper than me. I will tell you the truth. But he was an only child brought up by two white, fam two white parents. His mother died at the age of eight. So sure. how, how is it that he didn't fail? And I, as an African mother, where we have cultures and tradition, but the last time I went home, I could tell you I'm so disappointed. Parents are losing it back home more than those yeah, in the Western parents world. Parents lost it. Hmm. Parents are oh. losing it. My nieces were speaking English to me, pidgin English, and I told them to stop it. You, you are born and bred in the village. Mm -hmm. My son speaks a second language, Italian. The last time I brought him to Nigeria, they started teaching him pidgin English, which really pissed me off. I told them, teach him the language. When we get yes. back, we start speaking it. Exactly. Exactly. So we are really losing it back home. The imitation of Americanism is really blowing my head up. There's nothing in America. There's nothing. <laughs> hey. <laughs> so, Doc, thank you very much. And I'm so proud of you. Not only your children, I'm so proud of Chiamaka. She is really making you. Because you as you're not our mother, but the advices and everything you give to us are just so mind-blowing. And thank you for thank God for sending you to our life because you are my mentor, if I can say it to you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you so, so very much. When the Lord asked me in 2020, during that COVID lockdown, before Easter, to feed people, that people don't have money, they are hungry. And I told him I only had 14,000. He said, just go online. I will send you helpers. Helen was the first person that responded to that clarion call. She sent me the first 20,000 and she let us send money. And I shared it to the 10 families that Indicate because I told them if you know you don't have food, send your account number. I don't bother whether you are outside or Igbo or Yoruba or Ifi or Keneko. And the Lord told me, don't look at their faces on Facebook. They go to take pictures or in the studios, but the reality is that they don't have food. Because one man that sent his account number, I told him, I think you should be asking me to send the account number so that you put money. He said, Doki, as, as I'm talking to you, you don't have food. A lady had beds, no food. The 2000, she said one day, you are a lifesaver. I said, what do you, how do you mean? She said at that point, there was no food, nothing. They were going to the hospital for that 2000. That she was just scrolling on her uh, Facebook uh, page. And she saw where I said, if you don't have money, food in your house, please send your account number. She said, I've been following this woman. This woman cannot be uh, scamming us or telling us jokes. So she sent, she said, Jack Robinson, take him. She saw to 2000. She told the husband, take the ATM card. Oh, yeah. That was the food they ate. So I'm so grateful to God for what God is doing. Please let us pay attention. Let us, let us try our best and God will do the rest. Thank you so very much. I sincerely appreciate the two people that talked. Uncle Ben, the full madam, supposed to be is a pastor. He talked to us from America and Sister Helen from Australia. Thank you, Jideka is from Denmark and other people from London. So let's meet again next Sunday, Nigerian time. Thank you so, so very much. God bless you and have a fantastic week ahead. God bless you. Thank you, dog. God and happy you. Mother's Day to all the mothers. Yes. Happy, happy Mother's Day, Helen. Thank, Thank you. you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless happy you. Mother's Day to all the mothers over there. Thank Amen. you, sir. Thank you. Bye. Bye.